maybe not. Uh, so my name is Eric Mill. I'm just a dude. I'm going to talk to you about Webfinger, uh, which is about discovery. So there was an old Unix command called finger back in the day. Where you could look up information about people on the system, find out whatever you want to do about them. It was great. Uh, that doesn't really exist right now. At least it's only coming to being for, for, uh, for actual email addresses. And the problem here is that OpenID is hard. Uh, there's a, lo you know, a lot of people love OpenID. We want to see it succeed. The traction is not getting there, and it's, it's hard. Like, there are people who have done really good work trying to make it better graphically, whatever. Uh, OpenID Foundation knows it's hard. Yeah, who knows it's hard? And it's because people just don't really think, in the end, of themselves as a URL. Uh, what's better is as an email address. I mean, it's still not perfect, but it's a lot better. People are much used to thinking of themselves as emails. So what we want to do is to be able to, to, to make emails not just read only. We want to look at an email, ask doe.com about John, and get back lots of data about him, like all sorts of data. And we'll find, it's not really important what data we get, except that it has an open ID somewhere in it. So we can find that and then log him in. And in that way, Webfinger is not about replacing open ID. Uh, in fact, hopefully Webfinger as a name doesn't even exist at all. It's just about enhancing other services that are there, like open ID. It's about making that URL invisible. It's about letting people do anything they want to with their email address. And so you might attach anything, honestly, to your email. You could think of attaching maybe your public key for GitHub. You could think about attaching your avatar, which is something that Gravatar does right now. This is, in a lot of ways, just a generalized form of that. You could attach your social networks, your uh, homepage, whatever. So it's actually a lot like Twitter annotations, I think, in concept. I think it's a very powerful approach to standards, where you define the broadest thing possible, and then you let the community organically figure out the best ways to use that. Annotations are just key value pairs on tweets, and I think that's actually going to be really successful for them. Google and Yahoo actually have already implemented Webfinger. So if you have a Gmail address, you've already had an open ID for a while uh, that you may or may not have known about, and now you also have Webfinger to connect that to your email. Uh, and that actually connects you to a lot of things. So let's actually look uh, here using my email. Let's actually go through the Webfinger process. So if you want to find out about my Gmail, you go to that address, uh, and then you would see this XML here, and you can see in red there the template of that URL you'd want to go to to look up my email through Webfinger. So the next slide here is actually going to show you what that would be if you did fit in my email there. And you can see in red there at the bottom, I've called out my open ID. So that's how you would go from email to open ID. See, there are other things attached there as well, like micro formats, uh, portable contacts endpoint for uh, contact sharing through OAuth. Uh, you can imagine lots of things. It's actually just tied to your Google profile. Uh, so of course, we're all Rubyists, so client libraries can turn this into a line or two of code. It's really easy right now to go from a Gmail address or a Yahoo address to a name, uh, to an open ID. And I think you can all see right away how you might implement that into your user workflow for login and registration. So what's with that account URI, that protocol that, that's in front of that email? Because uh, there's a really interesting possibility here that we can do where we don't actually just limit ourselves to emails, to a mail to protocol. We can actually think of this as an account. We can think of ourselves as having an account at Twitter and Facebook and Flickr, because we do. And so what happens if we actually maybe think about those as as possible web finger providers. Like, what could we do? It's really just name at scope, after all. Emails actually just used to be usernames. There didn't used to be a domain name at all until there was an internet. So uh, there was a great talk at Google I.O. called Bridging the Islands, uh, where a few, few people there talked about all the whole stack of social web protocols that's coming up that are really exciting. Uh, and they did a great demo using Webfinger and Salmon that I can't demo here. I'm going to show you. This is ClickSet. It's an aggregator like Google Buzz that you can also post on. So you can see I've posted and said, hey, at, it's like an at reply, but using a full, fully qualified email-like name. And it's actually looked up my, my name there on that other service, on status.net, uh, using Webfinger. And you can log in on status.net. I can see on my account, I've seen that reply that I put in on ClickSet. So we've just done cross-site mentions using Webfinger as a lookup for discovery and Salmon for the, pro for the actual transport of data between them. Salmon's another great thing. I'd love to do a whole Ignite talk on myself. Uh, so, well, is this going to confuse people? There's a lot of debate right now about whether this will, and I think it won't for two reasons. I think I'm actually really impressed with how people adapted to at replies and hashtags. So they saw an immediate use, picked it up just fine. I also think in a lot of ways it's a UX problem with autocomplete or whatever. Like, I think that can really make it a lot better. Uh, this Open ID Connect that is, this is like two weeks ago, this is not defined at all, but uh, this is a proposal for Open ID built on OAuth 2, which allows emails as identifiers instead of URLs using Webfinger as the lookup just without calling it Webfinger. So will regular people go for this? I mean, I, I think so. Whether or not Diaspora falls flat in its face, you can see there's a desire for a decentralized web, uh, for a 
a better social web, and this Webfinger is one of the many pillars to make that happen. I think it's going to do great things. So thanks very much, and please go learn more about everything I just talked about. Thank you.